بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I am Dr. Samah Tawfiq Infection Control Specialist from General Directorate Infection Prevention and Control Today I'll talk about very important topic one of topics of Candida Oris Infection Control It is called the Candida Oris Infection Control Measures in Specific Healthcare Settings and for sure, Candida auris now, at nowadays, taking a lot of importance from all healthcare sectors because Candida auris having an alert because it is a multi-drug fungus, multi-drug resistant fungus emerging not, uh, not it is emerging uh, in many countries. It is spread in 30 countries. And for sure, we have to apply infection control measures to protect from transmission of this uh, microorganism in healthcare settings. And for sure, uh, we will uh, concentrate today about specific healthcare settings like the health department and home healthcare service. As a content of this lecture, We'll start, we'll start with a smart introduction, small introduction about Candida auris and its emerging and what is the difference between colonization and the infection for the patient or person. And it's very important to understand who, what is Candida auris to, uh, to continue in my, our lecture. Second topic is the Candida auris prevention measures. To understand the Candida auris prevention measures, we have to talk about mode of transmission and we'll, we will know and in, by enumeration uh, Candida auris infection control measures as a summary. Because there is another lecture talking about this uh, briefly. Specific infection control measures considerations for the ISS department, which is a new uh, as, a, as a topic of our lecture today with home health care services. Uh, these, these services and this department uh, having we have to apply standard precautions and all infection control measures, but in case of candida or colonization of or infection, we have to apply specific considerations just related to these departments and these services. As introduction, Candida auris is an emerging multi-drug resistant fungus. It's a fungus which is multi-drug resistant. All, multi, all uh, most of antifungal uh, drugs can't affect Candida aureus. And this is, presents a serious global threatening, first appear or first recorded in Japan 2009, the year of 2009. What is the difference between Candida aureus colonization and the infection? Once we said colonization, this means the patient or the person can carry this microorganism in his body, maybe in his skin, mainly present in axilla, in grime, in nerves, in hands, and this patient have no any symptoms of infections or signs of infections. But once patient called infected, this means the patient having the microorganism and having symptoms and signs of infection with Candida auris. This is the difference between colonized and infected. We have to know because it is very important to, to, to differentiate infected from colonized because colonized person, as we know, having no symptoms. Maybe I am colonized with Candida auris. Maybe one of us, maybe one of you, maybe one of any, any person can be colonized. One healthcare worker, two healthcare workers, one patient. That's why we have to apply infection control measures to know colonization and infection.
for sure for to apply any infection control measures to a microorganism or infection we have to know the mode of transmission of this microorganism because there is what is called the chain of infection chain of infection couldn't be affected or couldn't be broken only when we know the mode of transmission of this uh, of this microorganism Candidiasis spread in hospitals and other care facilities like long-term facilities through contact with contaminated surfaces or equipment. Okay, this contact, this contaminated surface and equipment is contaminated and are were contaminated from a previous patient that is colonized or infected with Candidiasis, and also. It can be spread from patient to patient by direct contact, direct contact between the patient and another patient, or patient and person, patient healthcare worker. The patient carrying colonized <coughs> with Candida auris or infected, it may shed the fungus through his skin cells. To summarize, Candida auris has one mode of transmission. Mainly is the contact the mode of transmission. We have two types of contact transmission. We have direct contact transmission and indirect contact transmission. Direct, the most famous example, is the direct contact between the patient and another patient. And the indirect, which is the most famous and the most common in transmission in healthcare setting is the contact with a contaminated environmental surface or contaminated equipment contaminated with the microorganism with candida auris from another patient to be used for sure by by knowing this mode of transmission rapidly we think about the weak point in this transmission the weak point in this transmission, we have weak, uh, the, the, the infection, the uh, uh, transmission, uh, the chain of infection, we have to break it in two points. We have to apply hand hygiene to clean the hands of healthcare workers, and also environmental surfaces should be contaminated, should be cleaned and disinfected thoroughly in case of candida auris. And for sure, also, the, there is, we have to isolate the patient for, to be, from being adjacent to another patient to prevent the direct contact transmission from patient to patient. We will talk about general infection control measures for Candida wars. I know this is not the topic the main topic of this lecture, but we have to start with to know the general requirements which should be applied everywhere when we discover a colonized or infected patient in healthcare setting, con infected or colonized with candida auris. This is general measures. My colleagues will uh, give a lecture about these measures, comprehensive lectures, will show everything for you, but I'll summarize with the summarize to start with before going to the specific recommendations or specific infection control measures for uh, uh, certain special healthcare departments and healthcare setting services. First, as we said in the previous lecture, we have for to, to break the chain of infection, we have to uh, uh, strictly adhere to proper hand hygiene practice. Strictly means all the personnel in the department come uh, uh, dealing with the patient colonized or uh, uh, infection, uh, colonized or infected with candida or microorganism should apply Proper infection control practice. Proper means method. We have hand washing uh, 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 technique and hand rub technique, alcoholic hand rub technique. For sure, I am preferring alcoholic hand rub because it is more powerful, more effective. 
and easy to be applied and strictly adhered to. But the hands shouldn't be soiled to apply alcohol. If the hands soiled, we have to use uh, uh, water and soap to practice hand washing. And also, we have to apply five moments, WHO five moments, and the proper method for hand rub and hand washing with availability of their supplies. Second is the application of transmission based precautions based on patient condition. What is transmission based precautions? Transmission based precautions is a, a precautions applied to a certain patient to prevent transmission of an infection or microorganism having the mode of transmission. Here we are talking about contact transmission based precautions. We have to put a patient in under contact transmission based precaution. All the personal protective equipment should use the PPE personal protective equipment, proper donning with proper donning and doving, and practicing hand hygiene for sure. Based on patient condition means if the patient has another condition. Some patients having uh, uh, maybe uh, candida auris in their sputum. That's why we have to apply droplet precautions during any deal with patient can induce sputum eruption like uh, we have uh, 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 suctioning or something like this three enhanced uh, environmental clean disinfection daily and the terminal cleaning using a recommended disinfectants we will talk later but for sure to break the chain of infection for this microorganism is very important to clean and disinfect strictly the environmental services in the patient area and the patient care equipment but using approved high level disinfectant by two main methods by daily and daily and uh, terminal cleaning Reusable equipment should be properly cleaned and disinfected with the recommended disinfectant and shared mobile equipment like glucometers, the scope and pressure cuffs should be focused on. Sure, sure this is also a method of mode of transmission in direct contact if you are using to uh, taking an equipment, reusable equipment without proper cleaning and the disinfection with approved high level disinfectant according to the manufacturer recommendation it will, it will trans discontaminate it and it can transmit the colonization the microorganism by colonization or infection to another patient used with limit the patient transfer and if mandatory infection control measures should be strictly applied what is this meaning this meaning that the patient under transmission based precaution under contact precautions this patient should be limited to transfer to avoid exposure of another patient or another personnel to the microorganisms shedded or produced from that patient this patient colonized or infected with candida auris. If mandatory, could be happened. The patient uh, needed to be to do CT, needed to be MRI. Any investigations, should, this patient should be transferred because is this investigation is a life safety. That's why infection control apply infection control measures during the transfer and uh, strictly by uh, uh, using PPE making uncrowded uh, uh, routes, avoid the immune, uh, 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 departments with high-risk people, high-risk patients, and also the, the transferring personnel should wear PPE, proper PPE. And if the patient producing a microorganism having uh, wound contaminated 
having uh, contaminated, colonized or infected with candida auris, this one should be covered perfectly before transmission of the patient. This is the uh, uh, patient transfer and should be avoided as we can. Screening <clears throat> for contacts for newly identified case patients, including healthcare workers to identify candida or colonization. For sure, if I found a patient infected or colonized with candida auris, I have to make a screening, laboratory screening, uh, for laboratory swabbing, laboratory sampling from all contacts dealing or in contact with that patient, including healthcare worker offering healthcare service. Because to know because some of, them, some of them could be a source of infection or could be, uh, 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 and, uh, could be colonized from uh, dealing or contact with that patient. That's why we have to know to apply our intensive infection control measures. This is our main titles. We will talk about specific infection control considerations for the dialysis department. We know, as we know, that the dialysis department offering service for a group of patients, special group of patients, mainly immunocompromised, mainly there is a lot of interference. That's why there is certain specific recommendations uh, it should be added to the general measures and the standard precautions to these patients uh, during the sessions of the health. In the health patients, we already applying as all if, uh, departments in the health care, we apply standard precautions. And also, Infection control practices routinely recommended for care of hemodialysis patients. And the transmission based precautions also should be applied for patients discovered to be colonized or infected with candida oils. Since specific measures, as we said, should be applied to these patients in that situation in the dialysis department, specifically should be applied in the dialysis department to prevent any harm or risk of transmission of infection to another patient or to healthcare workers from those patients colonized or infected with candida or with under dialysis. Also, we have to position the patient if, the, if we have in, this, in the dialysis department a patient colonized or infected with candida or with microorganism, if diagnosed with this, we have to make some consideration about the place of dialysis of the patient. The patient should, we have to select the uh, dialysis station, which is the, at the end of the unit, besides the, uh, we, with safety margin, or uh, we can leave one machine, one station, two stations, uh, between the patient and another patient uh, undergoing dialysis in the, in the same shift. This is very important. So why? To avoid any possibility of contact transmission between this patient and the other patient. And for sure, later on, we'll talk about the uh, uh, cleaning of the equipment and the environmental services, but I have to insist that that patient should be dialyzed on a machine at the end of the unit, away from other patients as possible as we can. Also another recommendation, if we have in the dialysis department the patient proved to be colonized or uh, infected with Candida auris microorganism, we should reschedule 
this patient to be the, the to, to, to undergo the dialysis in the last at, at the end the last shift of the day some dialysis departments have one shift some have two some have three if this happen we have to reschedule the patient to be at the end of the day to at the end of the day the last shift why to prevent any possibility of environmental or direct transmission to another patients because uh, after that we'll make terminal cleaning for the unit to be prepared for the new shift in the next day The recommendation for the healthcare worker to deal or to offer the health service for the patient in the dialysis department colonized or infected with candida auris that the uh, for sure hand hygiene should be strictly adhered and also the, the healthcare worker should wear gown and the glove during any uh, uh, with proper way for donning uh, during any contact or any entrance to the area or station of dialysis of that infected or colonized patient. The why to prevent any contamination or of their uh, uh, clothes uh, that may be cause of transmission of infection from the patient to another patient. And for sure, this healthcare worker should remove with proper doffing the personal protective equipment, the, the gown, the, the gloves, during, when leaving or before, just before leaving the patient station. Why? To decrease the possibility of uh, by mistake to go to serve or to talk or to deal with another patient in nearby station and that's why there is an increased risk of transmission of candida horse. <coughs> One of the most important candida horse uh, transmission uh, pre infection con uh, prevention con uh, uh, recommendation in the uh, dialysis unit and any uh, in any department is the dark enhancing enhanced environmental cleaning for environmental services in the dialysis station in dialysis patient for the dialysis patient if one of them the patient is colonized or infected with candida auris after finishing the dialysis uh, the, the station the machine the side table the bed or the chair should be cleaned and disinfected thoroughly using high level disinfectant approved from MOH in a proper way in consideration of two important things or three important things we have to know the dilution and the concentration and also we know we have to know the proper contact time to be effective against a microorganism like candida auris and also we should consider the, the recommendation uh, of manu the manufacturer recommendation uh, for when using with monitors and with the dialysis machine to prevent any damage from it. My recommendation and it is a, as a guideline and the literature, uh, a high sodium hypochlorite could be considered to clean and disinfect the, every item and every environmental surface in the dialysis station before the next patient come. Uh, by concentration 1000 part per million uh, which is high level disinfection there is another uh, types of disinfectants like uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, solution could be used for area decontamination 
if the patient uh, dialyzed in a special room, <clears throat> isolation room, we can use also dry mist hydrogen peroxide and also ultraviolet rays, which is very highly effective, but with consideration of avoidance of uh, the uh, shadowing effect of the UV light. This means the UV light should, every surface should be exposed to the ultraviolet rays to uh, enhance killing and uh, removal and, uh, and, uh, and inactivity, activate the candida auris microorganism. <coughs> this slide is very important for environmental and equipment cleaning. Why? Because this slide can show us the relation between the concentration and the types of, my, of disinfectants and the efficacy and the level of disinfection regarding the microorganisms. As we can see, we have low-grade disinfection by low-grade disinfectants, which indicated, which can affect the enveloped viruses and some non-enveloped viruses, and also gram-negative bacteria and gram-positive bacteria, and this with some exceptions. This is for the low-grade disinfectants. The most example of them is, uh, uh, we can say, uh, the quaternium non compound. <coughs> and also the second level is the intermediate level disinfection coming by intermediate level disinfectants, with the most famous example is the, uh, uh, some concentrations of sodium diluted sodium hypochlorite, and also uh, fourth generation quaternium ammonium compound. The sign or the mark for intermediate level disinfection is the effect, effect of disinfectant, the killing or inactivation effect of disinfectant to the mycobacterium tubercles. tubercles, tubercles. The third level, which is our level to fight candida auris is a high level disinfection and the mark of this level is to affect spores, bacterial spores like candida, like uh, cholesteridium difficile and also fungal spores like aspergillus. This, this is what we need to affect candida auris uh, multidrug resistant uh, fungus. Examples we have uh, a concentration of uh, 1,000 birth per million, as we said, sodium hypochlorite, a diluted household chlorine product, and also uh, hydrogen peroxide solution or hydrogen peroxide dry mist or fog machine, and also, uh, uh, which is very important, is ultraviolet rays uh, in concentration, as we said, to avoid shadowing effect. Here we are talking about environmental cleaning and disinfection for as a measure, a very important measure or the most important measure uh, for prevention of transmission uh, of candida auris in healthcare settings. This slide also is very important because it gives us idea how to dilute the household bleach or uh, the available uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, solutions in the market we, and which level we can use it for different levels. We have low level, intermediate level, uh, high level, the level we have to affect and inactivate and kill candida auris on the environmental surfaces in 1,000 part per million. As we said, we can see the concentration. It is 1 to 50 household bleach solution. 1 to 50, but in consideration that that solution in the supermarket, there is no win, uh, concentration and no percentage of this, of this product. And for sure, the sodium hypo, diluted sodium hypochlorite to be effective should be prepared and diluted freshly every day, never to be to use from the day before, and also should avoid 
the direct light exposure because it can inactivate or make it ineffective or, or can affect the effective efficacy of the diluted product on the mi targeted microorganisms. As continuation uh, for the specific con infection control consideration uh, in dialysis department, if we have a patient colonized or infected with Candida auris, we have to properly apply cleaning and disinfection for all reusable equipment used or introduced, even not used, to the patient station area, dialysis station area. This equipment should be considered a contaminated even if not used by the patient or even it's still uh, wrapped. We have to disinfect, clean and disinfect as it is a reusable device. What is the example? Blood pressure cuff, glucometer, also stethoscope. It can transmit if not pro properly cleaned and disinfected and used with another patient there is a risk for transmission of candida auris fungus, multidrug resistant fungus, from one patient to another patient by indirect contact mode of transmission. If the patient under dialysis should be transferred to another dialysis center or to a hospital to be admitted, or any occasion of transfer. This can be happened because patient dialysis patient move can, tra can travel to, uh, to another uh, town or can go to hash. So this patient colonized and if or infected candida or this patient, there is very specifically we have to use the transfer form. The transfer form should be in for, should in, should be used by the transferring facility to guide the facility the patient will uh, uh, direct it to how to deal with that patient by uh, uh, by isolation by uh, anything we should inform them that that this, that this patient is colonized or infected or previously colonized or infected with candida auris since time two. This is very important to prevent uh, acceptance of any patient without knowing any history of that patient and discover uh, later on that, that the patient is con colonized or infected with candida auris and can make a risk of contamination or transferring infection or colonization to another patients or healthcare workers of the accepted facility. Our second main topic in our lecture today is the specific infection control considerations in home healthcare services. This sector is very important because it is nowadays it is widely spread by uh, governmental uh, sectors and also uh, uh, private sectors and uh, there is a lot of patients staying at their homes, especially chronically ill patients and they are waiting to for a scheduled visit from time to time from the uh, home health care service teams. This is very important if that patient are colonized, is colonized or infected with candida auris, this is very important to deal with that patient properly and apply infection control measures, general standard precautions and also use a special consideration specialized for those patients to prevent tra transmission of infection to another patients. In addition to the standard precautions and infection control practices that is applied, that are applied routinely for home health care patients, this is a standard and routinely applied. And also 
uh, uh, there is a specific infection control measures should be applied in case of any patient colonized or infected with candida oils in this home health care service. Let us to see what is this recommendation or what is this special First, very important recommendation, if possible, the patient with candida oris colonized or infected should be scheduled at the last visit of the day. What is that meaning? This meaning is that if the pa that patients are visited, this, if we have five visits, the team have five visits for that day, the patient will be in the schedule the second visit. If that happened and we, info, we are informed as a team of home health care service that this patient is colonized with candida oris, that's why we have to automatically reschedule the visit if possible with the with, and informing the patient that we will visit him the, uh, at the end of the day will be the last visit of the day. Why? As we said before, we are trying hardly not to transfer the infection to another patient. For sure, there is many recommendations for home health care service team to be to apply. First, which is very important, to use alcohol and rub from time to time during the visit and especially before starting the visit and, la and bef bef during before leaving the home of the patient. Why is very important to prevent the transmission of infection from that infected or colonized patient to another personnel or another patients? But for sure, hand washing, hand hygiene, hand alcoholic hand rub is allowed only where is, when there is no uh, 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 gross soiling of the hand. And for sure, hand alcoholic hand rub is highly effective for in this situation. But we have to remind some people that it is very important to know that wearing gloves is not a replacement of hand hygiene. Why some people by bad thinking, thinking that I am wearing glove, I am protecting my hand, and my hands are protected uh, uh, from by glove. It, it is not uh, possible to contaminate my hand, and when removing the glove, my hand will be clear and safe. No, many, 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 many researches proved that. Wearing a glove is not considered a replacement for hand hygiene, and also uh, wearing gloves not preventing that there is some tears, some pores, minute pores can transmit the infection and so and the contamination to the hands of the healthcare worker. And if the patient, the healthcare worker in the uh, home health care visiting team is not uh, applying this uh, proper hand hygiene, they should be stopped and uh, 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 should apply education and, this, uh, and instructed to adhere to hand hygiene and the proper use of PPE. The second important special recommendation is uh, that the home health care team, home health care workers, uh, should, should wear gloves and gowns and any other needed uh, personal protective equipment in proper toning during all the time of the visit. With, with the visit to a patient colonized, with candida oris or infected with candida oris. And they have to strictly apply this with proper donning and proper doffing and removal of 
personal protective equipment from the of gown and the mask and uh, gown and the gloves and the mask if needed if there is any uh, procedure need, need mask to do they should be removed before leaving the home of the, uh, these patients to prevent any transmission of infection and for sure after removal of PPE we have to practice proper hand hygiene or proper alcoholic hand wrapping. As we said many times, especially in home visits, there is a bag, medical bag, with a reusable equipment, a glucometer, stethoscope, cuff, uh, uh, for blood pressure measurement, this is a reusable equipment, not not uh, uh, couldn't be a single use or couldn't be non-reusable because they go to maybe five visits, they transfer the from patient to patient to patient. Okay, after used with the patient, knowing to be colonized or infected, this equipment should be never should never be used with another patient before proper intensive cleaning and disinfection with approved disinfectant which is high level disinfection with consideration of manufacturer recommendation. We talked about this before. Thank you all. Uh, this is very important topic we have to know uh, well uh, to protect ourselves, to protect our families, our patients and prevent the transmission of this uh, multi-drug resistant fungus which can affect uh, patients and they can, uh, many people could be colonized with and very important to prevent colonization or infection uh, to prevent uh, any harmful effect from this microorganism. Thank you all. See you, Charlie.